Okay, well, hello everybody. Uh, joining me for this stream, wherever you are, this is a recording, so not actually a stream. And on that note, we got ourselves a 4v4. I was about to say, I uh, had a bit of a delay, wasn't sure if we're going to have a 3v, uh, 3v4 or what, but no, we got our final player up in here. So, uh, looks like we're good to go. It's Lost, it's Crusaders, and they're getting a stream uh, coming in here. Be the first stream for Lost, and uh, actually first stream for Crusaders as well. So each of these teams had uh, played in Week 0 and Week 1, but uh, this will be uh, the first time that we do get to see them here uh, on sort of stream. More so recording, but you get the gist. It's close enough, yeah? Yeah. Uh, nonetheless, on the first joust, uh, we'll be taken here by Crusaders Draco. Draco, uh, that is Dragon, with uh, the clear to the other end, but it's going to be taken by Lost Precision. And now needs to make a decision going to uh, the hands here of VR Corbin. So Corbin with a disc, and you can hear some of the comps coming out. Probably will mute that just in case it's too, uh, too much. But either way, uh, off on the touch, couldn't get the goal. About 30 seconds here, expired in the first round as a clear. Does manage to work its way all the way through to the deep end and actually uh, very, very close to that goal where Draco does await. So Draco gets a disc back. And looking to just pass it off or clear it off into the tunnel. Uh, but yes, so I uh, don't think I even introduced myself. M not sure I need to or not, but either way, Palador here with VRML. This is season two. This is week two, and these are two teams yet to be streamed coming in on uh, kind of uh, one of the, the numerous rookies in this league. Rookie teams, that is to say. Uh, there's about 100 of them, so continuing to get as many casted as we can all throughout. But happy to be here for this one and getting a good look. So, uh... Just to go over the roster real quick, we had G2 Red 89 there on Lost, as well as uh, Lost Precision, the namesake perhaps. We have Makai and Outcast Gamer. Meanwhile, it is Outcast Gamer trying for an anchor shot, but instead a little overcast, I suppose, on the hit. Now for Crusaders, was it's a Samurai Gaming or same same right Gaming? I'm gonna have to be corrected on that. Wouldn't be the first time this uh, week that I've had to be corrected on some names. Same rig gaming, samer. Hmm. All right. Well, either or, if we have a freezy pop Draco and VR Corbin, will be same with a disc and Corbin with an oh on the goal. I wasn't sure if that was gonna go, but nice hit right off the backboard, softly in at just uh, three meters per second off the backboard, but hitting that perfect corner, and will indeed get them the results that they were hoping for. So now uh, it's rebuttal time coming in from Crusaders. Crusaders, uh, or from Loss, rather, on the Crusaders. Not to be confused, of course, with Skull Crusaders, who were one of the uh, teams over in VRML North America last season. Now, uh, ooh, a good punch coming in there. Draco diving out, but rebounding it, now saving it. Look at that from Draco. Gets the... Uh, Great grab off the uh, punch, just knocking the disc loose, and then he saves it himself again. So some back-to-back -back defensive plays as a short-range boost goes for Corbin. Corbin retaining the disc for a moment, but getting stunned here by a Makai. Now he'll go for a clear. Makai going for that one. Uh, Corbin just taking a uh, haymaker, giving a haymaker there as he flies on by with a short-range boost, but ultimately will be Draco getting the disc. And I do like uh, for the Crusaders here, you know, they... Recognize they didn't really have to uh, all dive on the disc, uh, the spacing. Trying to position out for maybe some passes and looking for some more uh, short range boosts there, but uh, trying to get some grabs and a uh, Draco will get the grab. Going to be missed there by Makai and uh, needs to pass it off here to the Giro, uh, Geo where VR Corbin awaits. Now Corbin trying to look for the bow tie pass, gets it over to Same, and Same uh, needs to dodge through. Actually going for the three, beautiful hit. I believe that was Freezy uh, in the goal there, bothering the goalie, punching him out and enabling Same to get the great shot from three. 11 meters per second, for, uh, sorry, 11 meters out and 14 meters per second. So very well done there. Crusaders get the first couple goals in this first round. Now, Disc will get kind of hung up here at the top of the midfield and 
G2 red. Needs to be careful. There's the defense coming up with the stuns. A bounce uh, finding the hands of Draco, though, inside the goal. So Crusaders getting a clear right back as these stacks try to unfold here. But it will be Lost Precision making uh, the choice to dive out of the goal. And uh, we'll leave it momentarily exposed. And will he be able to capitalize? No. Almost. Barely missing there. Grazing the top of the rim. And bouncing right back to G2's hands. So G2 uh, being boosted off of there by... Who was that there? It was VR Corbin. So uh, Corbin trying to contest that. Three different players. And Corbin <laughs> needs to just get rid of that somehow. Uh, anywhere. Because uh, with so many players all bunched up there in the same place... You know, anywhere he throws that disc, uh, we'll get somewhere handy, probably. And it does indeed get here to same. And he's going to go for a pass up top to Freezy Pop. And will he Freezy drop the goal? Yes, he does. Little celebration occurring there from Corbin and Freezy Pop getting it done. Nice backboarded shot. That's a seven, seven points here for Crusaders. And definitely on a Crusade to start out this round. We're about halfway through, a little bit less in fact, so 424 remaining. There's the punch, and uh, the disc getting eventually, oh, just past the hands of three different players on the blue side. So same, we'll get the disc, and needs to get rid of that one as well. But up top to the Cloud Geo there. Outcast attempting to get that, but saving the day and saving the play, perhaps. G2 rad, but a stun double, in fact, uh, actually getting it right back now. Freezy pop. Definitely needs to clear that out the way. You see the uh, deep in the back line running kind of a permagoli setup there for Lost. And, uh, of course, over time, we always point out, and you know, uh, as, as you get more experience with the game and, and team play, for sure, uh, it serves to the benefit to be, uh, be able to bring those uh, deep backliners up into the midfield once you, once they're on offense here. I think that would make it a lot easier for, for Lost on some of these move up the floor because at the moment you see the uh, taking a risky shot there against Draco. So Draco just going for a clear instead off of that and does find the other end. Uh, positioning overall and boosting overall pretty good from uh, Crusaders. They're showing some good stuff. And now maybe finding themselves on a two-on-one. Gets the stun. Gets the goal. So uh, actually looks like Lost there. Lost uh, Precision. He actually did do a good job of blocking the punch. But of course, when you're running interference and blocking the field of view, the vision there uh, on the goalie, it just makes it very tough to get the grab. So despite the fact that he wasn't even stunned out... It was still just enough of a distraction to enable the goal to be scored. So that's uh, definitely a good move there. Good work from Loss. And Crusaders all the meanwhile causing a turnover in the deep shot. And it uh, looks like dropping out, unfortunately. Hope that's uh, not, not a, not a uh, purposeful dropout by any sorts. That's, that's very tough. Uh, two players kind of dropping at the same time. So uh, same, we'll get the shot here. All right, so not sure what happened there. I was trying to kind of figure it out on my end, but they are playing and didn't get a uh, initiate a restart either, that is to say. So not really sure what the issue is and if there's any communication going on. Hopefully there is. Trying to pay attention to the Discord just in case. Don't see anything quite yet. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, we'll be taken back by VR Corbin. And uh, they're going to play on as they need to. Unless there's a restart, you know, tech timeout initiated here or, or what have you by uh, loss. Then Crusaders, it's just it's within their rights here to continue playing on. Going for a pass, but just pass the hands instead. And reaching eventually the bottom ramp. Now, Freezy Pop takes a disc over. And looks for that cross pass over to Same. Same uh, just going to bring it into the bubble. And uh, now trying to get a goal. Does so very successfully there just as it gets stunned. Trying to... Uh, Trying to get, so, yeah, unmuted the comms here just to try and get an idea of maybe what's going on, but. Don't, don't, don't go, don't go yet, don't go yet. 
All right, well, I am personally well, not too sure. But uh, either or, G2 <laughs> red. I mean, I like I said, it's de two. definitely tough uh, if you're going 2v4. I mean, 3v4 is already tough enough and borderline impossible to win uh, in that kind of situation for a sustained amount of time at least. But certainly if it's 2v4 permanently, that's going to just make it even more difficult. Uh, so I'm definitely hoping for round two. We get him back. Going to try and calm with the players a little bit and just find out what happened here between rounds. So uh, just reset it out here to the sidelines and uh, figure out exactly what's going on. Actually, one more shot. No, a grab. Lost precision. Very nice work there to uh, get the grab. All right, so uh, let me get the scores input here as Crusaders do take the first win. But... I do need to figure out what exactly the situation is. So one moment. No, they restarted request. Yeah. What? What happened? Okay, that's what happened. Boy. Restart request. All right. So we at least got one player back here. You can hear, uh, again, some of the comms in the back line uh, talking about what's going on there. I was trying to figure it out myself. I'm not sure. Uh, but either way, we're going to roll with it unless I'm told otherwise. I was just uh, basically hoping just because the two dropouts occurred uh, pretty quickly, like r right in relation to each other uh, within, I don't know, five five seconds. I, I wasn't sure if that was just a coincidence or something had happened. Uh, I mean, real quick, just to get uh, make sure we got a look at the scores if possible. And uh, there we go go uh won't have no actually we're good so there you go it was uh we got some stats to look at i fortunately got the partial ones look li looking like uh actually no that looks right never mind i can't math nonetheless trying to wait it out here uh of course between rounds you are permitted separately from a tech timeout or a tech break you can uh, teams can request up to five minutes between each round and that's that's allowed and it doesn't it doesn't apply as like a tech timeout or what have you so you can definitely do that uh, at your own leisure between rounds perfectly allowed of course if crashes and tech issues do occur between round or in the middle of rounds like when the gameplay is going on it's either you can res uh, reset after 45 seconds of action if uh, you know no scoring is happening you can go and reset from that point or you play until that goal the next goal and then you reset once you respawn in the uh, in that spawn area and then same thing there you set the times back and do all that good stuff and you can take a, a tech time out in those instances now as far as what's going on here so uh, they did uh, when we open up this cast mention how the fourth player uh, for lost it looked like that they were maybe just going to start off 4v3 and were uh, okay with that apparently or at least they, they seemed ready for it now that said, they got that fourth player arrival there very, very late, right before we started. And that was all well and good, but now uh, kind of losing out again. So that's why I'm just a bit confused on what's uh, going on exactly. But nonetheless, going uh, to the scoreboard once more, as these teams continue to discuss in the background just a little bit. Uh, it was nine points, same rig gaming. Coming for, well, the heads there have lost with nine points and two assists. It also has a save and a steal and ten stuns. So every category of the stat line, just filling it up to be sure. Meanwhile, VR Corbin with two points, one assist, one steal, and nine stuns. He had Freezy Pop with two points, one assist, and 15 stuns. And then Draco Dragon, three saves and nine stuns there in the back line, so very nice. Over on the lost side of things, it's uh, two saves and two steals, as well as 12 stuns for lost precision. They'll definitely be enjoying themselves on those kinds of plays on the defensive end. It's just a matter of getting on the score sheet, of course. Uh, the struggle for them uh, here, and especially once they lost their other player or two. Now, Outcast had a save, a steal, and 14 stuns. He had G2 Red 
with the one save, one steal, and 11 stuns, and then Makai with the five stuns. So as we uh, continue on this intermission just a little bit, uh, another player dropping out there again for loss, though, as I say that. They're, they're still trying to figure out the situation exactly, but uh, but the roster kind of fallen uh, apart, it seems here, unfortunately. I'm not sure if it's a tech-related or just some sort of miscommunications. I know this game initially was scheduled for about an hour uh, earlier of a start and then kind of got... Uh, readjusted last minute, rescheduled just a, a bit between the two teams. Now, I uh, definitely appreciate the fact, too, though. I mean, they're, I know I was hearing from Lost and then in, in the open comms, you know, they don't want to uh, concede the game and forfeit or anything like that if they don't, you know, if they can avoid it. So, you gotta love the, the uh, that kind of competitive spirit, of course. But, but it definitely is one of those tough issues to, to deal with. And uh, not terribly unexpected, you know, to occur now and then. Because we do know with all the new players and teams in the league, uh, this is something that, you know, does happen. As uh, the league is open for all and there are so many people, uh, new teams and new players, that there's, there, there's going to be confusion at times. There's going to be these uh, moments of kind of inconsistencies. And, you know, you, you don't like to see it, of course, but... It will, uh, issues will occur. Of course, you know, the teams who do kind of put in the, uh, the extensive time or any really amount of time, they, uh, you know, they'll be getting the uh, matchup against players and, and teams of kind of the same mentality and calibers, which is uh, kind of the nice part there between the... Sorry, I uh, got distracted by some open comps. Uh, muted there for the stream, or, or for the cast at the moment, but... Uh, but nonetheless, yeah, you uh, get what you put in into VR amounts. So whether you're those top tier, master tier teams who uh, do just uh, oh, do tend to scrim and practice all the time and really play at that that highest level and really pushing those limits, those are the matches you're going to get. Uh, of course, if you're you know newer teams, less experienced teams, uh, or you're you're a team who just uh, intentionally kind of joined in to you know, be a little bit more casual about it, uh, that's okay too. You know, you get matched up against similar teams as well once the MMR does come into play at least. Uh, and, you know, it does take a few matches sometimes uh, across the weeks before your MMR does settle since it is a, a VRML-based system there. It's uh, nothing we're pulling directly from the game itself or from uh, Ready at Dawn's end, so. But, yeah, getting a word in the Discord there. That they were taking their tech timeout uh, to potentially get their player back, or uh, the 15 minutes rule applies uh, if for for ping issue. Like if you have to get a sub, that's when the 15 minute thing applies. Now uh, that said, look like they just hit res uh, start or the start on the game, but they do need to set it correctly here, I think. Um, or not. All right, well. All right, so problem here. <laughs> they reset yes, all, when they weren't ready based on the open comms and two, the, the, the scores and such. So I'm very, I'm very much confused. Did they decide to just reset from round one or? Okay. Well, I don't know. I'm going to go with it. It's chaotic. And... If you think I'm editing editing this in post, you thought too much. We're just going to roll with the chaos and upload this in full. Why not? Uh, nonetheless, 46 seconds left. So I'm oh, I'm under the assumption, perhaps based on the time, based on the score, uh, that they just decided to, among themselves, and maybe I missed it, to reset from uh, first round with a minute and a half remaining. And if that's the case, uh, that's the case. All right, so... Taken by Draco here with less than 30 seconds left, I think. <laughs> and going for a boost, uh, trying to defend that one. Actually, might bounce right back, but no. G2 red. Yeah. Let's see the disc right back here. 
And is now looking to clear it out. But just has it taken instead by Draco there on the other side of the tunnel. So offering uh, plenty of trouble on the defensive end. And as of this round, I think, comes to an end. Let me see. Unmute some players. and Okay, so they just said round two. No, we're doing good for three people. All right, all right, okay. All right, my confusion was through the roof for a few minutes there. But now I understand. And if uh, you, you teams uh, happen to be watching this later, you know, no worries, uh, just, just for your, like, you know, posterity and for uh, reference on how that all goes. Uh, if, well, I already mentioned the whole timeout uh, thing and how that, uh, how that rule plays out. But, uh, but yes, uh, definitely, if you have very a specific, uh, you know, agreements between players, like you're going to restart from that first round there, you know, and things like that. Definitely communicate it to uh, your casting team if you can in the league organization channel on the Discord. And just kind of let them know, keep them in the loop uh, on what's going on. And just to touch up for uh, clarity there, since I did kind of, I think I jumbled up my explanation, but one of the players mentioned they were taking their 15 minute timeout. Uh, that is, so that's, that's specifically, yeah, if, if they're going for, if they have a ping issue, one of the players are above that ping cap of 150 uh, for a sustained time, and they need to get a sub. That's when the 15 minutes of uh, timeout is allotted to go find a sub if possible. Uh, but otherwise, if it's just a situation where you're trying to get the same player back into the match who, who dropped out or was having issues, uh, you're allowed one uh, five-minute timeout, tech timeout per team, Per match, so across all three of the rounds, you can take five minutes in the middle of a game, uh, in the middle of a round, or you can also take uh, up to five minutes between each round, and uh, that's not considered a timeout or anything like that. That's just, you know, extra time if teams happen to want to take extra time uh, at their leisure, at their request, then they can do that, but... Uh, but yes, so, quick question to myself, does, does me filling in all this dead air when I'm not even streaming, does it, does it actually matter or not? That, that is a question. You know, you're always taught as a caster to not leave any kind of dead air, not leave, uh, leave the people at home just listening to static or empty, uh, empty air, but in this case, because this isn't being streamed, this is just a VOD. That only means it's just going to be skipped over anyways. They can fast forward the wonders of the modern world and internet. So as I sit here, talking to possibly no one who will ever hear this, I must ponder my life decisions. All right, but that said, I will mute myself because I do want to communicate uh, into Discord with these teams right now because so, I am getting a, uh, a message. So now you will get dead air no matter what.
Alright, hello, I'm back from my momentary silence. <laughs> Still waiting on players to rejoin here, and I'm just going to have myself some Dr. Pepper. Which bears mentioning, still not sponsored by them. Kind of unfortunate. But what I can do is mention our great sponsors otherwise, which is to say, Pro2 VR, VR Cover, Rebuff Reality, Fixed Gaming, and VR Wear. Always love uh, you know, all the, the prizes and the accessories and uh, things that they provide. And I think that covers it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, of course, you know, Pro2, uh, great for the shooters of the league. Uh, VR cover, almost a necessity, I would say, if you're an Echo Arena player, VR eSport player. It's just very, you get sweaty, you want to keep uh, all clean and tidy. That's VR cover right there. Of course, Rebuff Reality, selling all kinds of fancy pants VR accessories uh, that you can use there. Uh, you know, you, premium st uh, straps and audio solutions and uh, all, you know, all kinds of great uh, accessories there that you can buy and uh, fixed gaming providing our music that you hear in the uh, intros the the intermission specifically there now meanwhile uh, VRware our newest sponsor here as of the last uh, last month or so bringing them in after season one VRware of course uh, a well as the name implies a connoisseur of VRware get your uh, clothing accessories uh including you know vrml branded ones uh and and venom venom branded ones venom is uh, sponsored by vrware just as well so thanks to all our sponsors there and just as well we got to thank uh, our lovely moderating team i said that very funny which is to say wit not a sneaky evil princess alakos gilligan echo zero and dano mcfabulous been doing a great job across the last uh, several weeks here just to get this season up and running. Of course, uh, there's our casting crew that I normally do think at the end of streams, and would be too many to list them all here out loud, but then given how much we're delayed, maybe it's necessary. Who knows? <laughs> uh, but we're going to hopefully get going soon. I, I believe the teams have readied up. Uh, still going to continue on 3v4 unless something changes imminently here. I think we're just waiting on this 60 second countdown on the clock to finish perhaps and it looks like that is the case all right so we're going back to it <laughs> most unusual matchup and again if any of you guys are watching this uh you happen to play in this game it's no worries I mean, I, I'll admit I'm kind of glad this wasn't live streamed in a sense because that was a lot of stalling. But, you know, stuff happens and I'm not upset or anything like that. It's all good. I do like the, the attitude in general from these uh, teams. Good attitude overall considering the issues. So it makes it much easier for me to maintain a good attitude uh, for sure. And that said, uh, as Lost does continue on fighting hard and, and just being, you know, trying to power through strong through this uh, unfortunate... 3v4 situation that they do have going on. Now I've got to give up props as well to Crusaders. They've been playing uh, you know, quite organized and just a trying for that uh, discipline style. That said, the miss barely on that disc will still be retained here by Same. Now it's great positioning from Same. He's going to go for a passing play. Look at that gorgeous move. It's an assist from Sane to Corbin, and just getting a look on the cameras there, uh, you can see the appreciation there as well from uh, the Crusaders as a team. Just loving that passing connection. Now, on the note of connections, another lost one. And believe me, the word, the word play there isn't lost on me. Lost, getting lost, and their connections getting lost, and I'm sure... Uh, if you're on the Crusaders, you're going to be kind of a hater on that situation. That is to say, not on the team, of course. But, yeah, just very, very tough to deal with. Uh, persistent tech issues and dropouts, just never a fun thing. But uh, this is definitely one of the most, I, I suppose, excessive uh, bouts of issues that I I've seen in a fair while occurring on one team. Now, that said, an attempt here on that shot, going for maybe a Joker train instead, will just uh, go for a uh, rebounded goal. Freezy pop. Trying to freeze out Lost here. 
So back on to it. Eight minutes left in the second round, and I'm not sure if uh, there looks like we're just going to continue here. I mean, the timeouts have already been expended, making it uh, you know quite difficult, obviously. But, you know, de definitely a feel for the team lost here. Now, that one, see, that would have been a beautiful shot had there not been a goalie there. Uh, but that was really in position to go off that backboard for a great hit, uh, that is to say. But nonetheless, just eating the hits instead with the punches and just trying all that they can to complete this round uh, the best they can. I mean, looking for an opportunity, however, it's the same. They're going to have the open goal and walk it in, it looks like. And trying to eventually dunk it, maybe get some uh, more time off the clock. Of course, that being said, because it is a continuous clock, that's just going to... Uh, Go on either way you cut it. All right, so lost. Uh, we'll still get this disc here on this uh, joust. They're still going to maintain their positioning in this game and close off. And as I said, I got to hand it to them. There were a couple times in Echo's uh, pass and in competition that we've had to kind of when I was playing actively uh, on a team, like we've had to uh, suffer through a few situations like that in in season, definitely season three of uh, VRL, about a year a year and a month ago or so. Definitely had some dramatic issues. Aside of the fact that we were just not as good as we once were, our teams were better, I guess that is to say. Uh, but certainly in the last month, I just remember being plagued by all ki uh, kinds of issues. Uh, that really uh, screwed us up on those those Sunday cups. You know, fun as they fun as they were. They were also quite long, <laughs> but but yeah, those uh are the kind of things that will happen on online play from time to time. You just gotta accommodate the best you can uh, when possible, where possible. That said, the shot not quite possible, at least on the first attempt. But Freezy Pop will retain, looking for the other angle. And they will tangle for the goal. It's eight points here, Crusaders. So on the joust here, about 5.30 remaining and uh, just continuing with this two-man game. Forcibly, our G2 Red and Lost Precision. So on uh, that note, we'll be Lost Precision with a clear out. Over to that bottom ramp. Uh, looks like it's going to go actually to the wedge and here by G2 Red. All things considered, doing well here. They're trying to play on. A lost precision with a disc and needs to try and miss this defender. Gets uh, the disc off in time on the throw, but won't quite go. Some nice short range boosting coming in from the two lost players here. Definitely finding each other at the very least. And they need to they stick together like glue. Or else. Crusaders will get a two. And they do. It's 10 to 0, 444 left. And what a fling back at that from VR Corbin. Just a, uh, I mean, look at that replay there. Just a complete, immediate uh, shot. Barely even looked at the rim. You know, just knew where to put it. Great hit. 10 points here, 423 remaining. Launching out's lost precision. And it does look like, uh, in fairness as well, you know, Crusaders, uh, not not playing completely ham at this point, trying to, you know, allow some room for Lost to uh, play on. Uh, and they will, but that's sad. It's Draco. No blood spilt yet on the Crusaders' end, continuing to maintain that stranglehold here and uh, keep them scoreless. Now, trying to make a shot there, will miss and bounce right back to the opposite side. A good recovery and sling down by... A G2 red, and he's going to contest and very nicely gets the punch, gets the boost, but actually maybe that boost not what he needed because that extra speed was uh, what resulted in uh, the mishandling. Now, Lost Precision handled that first the nice time, or the, nice the first time, got, went dyslexic for a hot second, but same, gets the goal, and they're up a dozen now. 12 to 0 off that recovery. So with 3.23 remaining, on this uh, cast, on this stream. Crusaders looking good to take the win, but loss, uh, seeing if they can at least get a goal, perhaps, and then have something, you know, to take home. Nothing else, they will go home with uh, at least the pride here for G2 Red and Lost Precision. I like the fact that they've stuck with it as long as they have, and 
uh, in this uh, situation. And Freezy Pop just uh, dunks it in. Right place, right time for a rebounder. So under three minutes remaining here. And uh, lost on the Joust. So see what they uh, come out with here with their admittedly limited options. Looks like they will go inverted. One of those, uh, you know, things that are more common to see these days. Players playing uh, inverted, upside down, sideways, or even a combination of all of it. You know, those whirly twirls when you're going to the goal, spinning around. Uh, it was, fun fact, uh, my teammate Lemming on Eclipse back in 2017. In the beta days, before he was even my teammate, it was, uh, but yeah, he was the one there who kind of founded the upside down play style. He was famed and acclaimed for it. Uh, because back in, in that time period, you know, we're talking June, July 2017. Uh, he was he was dominant, and he was really the only one as nice one from VR Corbin there. But Lemming, yeah, he was, he was kind of the one who adopted that play style. He was also one of the first players to really throw in a bunch of, uh, you know, jumping and ducking and just that high athleticism and mobility into his play style. But, uh, of course, over time, you know, by the time it, it got to the fall and winter months, a few of the other top teams in the league... Uh, had, you know, a player upside down at least. Uh, moving on as well. Further and further by the time we reached summer 2018 and beyond, it's really where it kind of turned around and you did see uh, as, oh, we get Outcast Gamer actually rejoining here. Unfortunately, not really much time left on the clock in 19-0. Uh, and 0. Uh, But yeah, back to the thought. Just it was towards the end of, uh, or towards the middle of 2018, I would say, and onwards, when you really just started seeing a lot more players on any given team uh, starting to adopt it. And now, especially in VR ML and at the upper levels, the, the master tiers, uh, not uncommon whatsoever to see, you know, at least one player on each team uh, playing upside down or inverted in some way. And, you know, the purpose of that, of course, is when you're defending against that. It's, it's a lot harder to defend against a player who is trying to uh, drive in with a disc uh, from up above. Because if you're a goalie, for instance, you have to really crank your, your head and your arms way above you. It's just it's a very uncomfortable uh, position to be in. Whereas, for instance, players who play right side up and trying, uh, you know, approaching from below, it's, it's much easier just to look down and to maneuver that way. But yeah, by, by uh, turning upside down as an offensive player, that just means it makes a floor your ceiling. So it's easy for you to maneuver as offense. And simultaneously, it's more difficult for the defense to actually defend against you. So it's really twofold the reasonings why uh, it's so handy. But just, uh, just a little aside, a little insight onto kind of the history of the upside down play and how that all happened. But that said, 19 points here in this win. Outnumbered situation, but... You know, the players, the six players who remain in this, this round for the majority of it, I mean, they, they stuck through it. They played hard, and they, you know, they played uh, with some good skill, and especially for Lost, considering their position, uh, you know, they, they played uh, their hearts out there. Now Crusaders, of course, throwing in a little bit of flash here and there, but at the same time, uh, I don't think they were, you know, like not going super ham in the sense, trying to uh, make it at least uh, somewhat fair. But of course, in these situations, you know, you, you also want, you, you still want to win by as much as you can. Uh, in VRML because that will just get you your your matchmaking uh, ranking MMR there faster and get your matches even more even in the coming weeks uh, at a faster pace. Although that being said, uh, with the three on four and sometimes two v four situation, that does skew things a little bit. Uh, but just the mentality on that because it's actually been a question asked uh, a couple times. But uh, yeah, you always. Even if you're a casual team, you always want to try hard when it comes to your matches. Uh, that way you can just be more and more guaranteed that you get some great matches uh, by the time the next week uh, uh, comes around and your matchups get le uh, unleashed on you. So. With that said, we'll read off the stats here as we come to a close. It was 16 strong points from Same Rig Gaming. 16 and 5 assists as well. 13 stuns. We had VR Corbin with 8 points and 5 assists as well. Uh, Freezy Pop with 10 points, 21 stuns. 
And then Draco with four saves and nine stuns, playing that back line very well. Over on Lost side, it was uh, five saves all around for Lost Precision, four steals, and 21 stuns. Uh, impressed here by Lost uh, across the board, really, with the, the stun department. So again, despite being down players, they, they still did pretty well when it came to the brawls. And actually outdid uh, Crusaders on that end. You can see you know G2 Red there with 27, which uh, is, in fact, the game high. They match high, so well done on his part. Uh, got a steal and a save as well for Outcast Gamer. One save, one steal, 16 stuns. And then Makai with five stuns. So, uh, effective game from Crusaders all around. Perhaps not the most even match uh, they wanted, just in terms of numbers. But for one fi final time, not to dwell on it too much, I probably have been. But like I said, I really do appreciate the fact that uh, for Lost, even being down players... You know, they did not give up on it. That said, you're... I do want to note, and I, I kind of let it slide a little bit for, for this one, given uh, the comms I was hearing between rounds uh, and some of the things that were being expressed there. Like, uh, technically not allowed to play 2v4. 3v4, you, you can. And if it's basically the only option and subs aren't available. 2v4, technically against the rules there. Uh, but, you know... For this particular match, so so be it, because I didn't want to just tell them they couldn't play, especially hearing the comms uh, from Lost side expressing that, yeah, they wanted to finish this out. You know, they didn't want to forfeit. They could have. Most teams probably would have, being down the numbers. So, you know, if I get in trouble for that, so be it. You know, speak to my manager. Wait, I am my manager, kind of. Not really, that's Dakin. But nonetheless, we'll just pretend. Uh, but yeah, thank you for watching uh, and for tuning in wherever you are in this VOD. I've been Palador. Uh, that was VRML Lost vs. Crusaders. Uh, be happy, be healthy, be safe, and always be good to each other. And we'll see you again on stream, hopefully live, real soon.